Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Welcome back to the Steeler Wade Show. My name is Jake Wade. Thank you for joining me. And, whoo, that was a pretty game. That was a pretty game. Did anybody else out there happen to sit down and watch this game? Like, be able to sit down and not be mad at their brides and not be mad, you know, and just sit down and watch a game. You know, folks, after the, you know, the cold Christmas time, I think a lot of us have situations that we're in where we might become more grateful for things. You know, I don't know if it was exactly right after the game, but I was going through YouTube and I didn't really realize how many podcasts are out there on the Steelers, maybe. And I just want to say that I thank you very much for checking out my show. And if uh, I'm entertaining at all, um, I'm glad. And I'm glad that maybe you get a grin or maybe a grin inside or you think a different way. You know, it was a neat game to watch. Very nice. It was the first time, uh, literally, I've been able to sit down. Like, it's been a long time, like, since I've sat down and watched a game. Uh Going back to Ben having to put it out in two seconds, like 1.9. Like, I'm standing, it's been years. <laughs> it was great, you know, and we're going to have a quarterback controversy, right? Leading up, you know, through the whole time that Mitch Trubisky was starting, podcasts everywhere, I thought, podcasts everywhere, were constantly bringing up that we just haven't had enough time to evaluate Kenny Pickett. Right? There's just not enough film. He's been hurt. He just needs to be out there more. That's how we need to evaluate him. We're saying, hey, we need three years, but you've only played two-thirds of two years. You know, those same people are going to talk out of their mouth about Mason Rudolph. You got to play the hot hand, right? You know, and I, I've always been a supporter of Rudolph. You know, I've never been up his ass, but I've been like, hey, I have nothing against the guy. And if anything, I lean towards him. I was disappointed uh, when they sign Mitch, you know, it's easy for a mother, it's easy for the guy to say that now, right? You know, don't take any, you know, that's just me talking. But, um, I always, you know, Mason was cool. He's all right. You know, maybe we all got caught up in that whole duck thing, you know? Uh, but I will say one of the things that I think that uh, allowed me to sit down is being able to enjoy something. Okay, we were ahead. But I mentioned in a past podcast about the one thing that about Mason is, is that he is um, that pocket passer. You know, so any of you old heads that grew up on these men that would one, two, three, four, five, one, two, you know, and, uh, or one, two, three, one, you know, uh, we've gotten away from it. You know, I'm not saying it's the best. It's just that, you know, it's what I grew up on. And, uh, I love pocket passers. You know, I was, uh, never a fan of the running quarterback. So what I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying it is what it is. I know what's right. Steeler Nation, come on. What a win! We beat the Bengals again! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> that was nice. Whew. All right. Back to the quarterback controversy. Uh, so, you know, 
That's going to be the deal. Mike uh, Tomlin came out with his press conference today and uh, basically made it sound like we're going to figure out if Kenny is available, you know. Uh, that might be, is Kenny available to be number two ahead of Mitch? I don't know, you know. So we're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different ideas. Uh, Kevin Culver, uh I remember this quote being mocked of his uh, by, you know, people that talk about the Steelers. Uh, when he said that he saw, uh, or the team saw, a first round pick in Mason Rudolph. Uh, when they got him in the third round, you know, they were like, why is this guy still available? You know, that was their excuse. There was a lot of, you know, that was a lot of, with the Ben, you know, and, um, you know, I don't know. You know. That's a whole nother thing to talk about. I'm trying to keep this under 50 minute. But, um, that was the way that he evaluated him. And I am sure that he, uh, Kevin will probably be in the Hall of Fame. Well, you take that how you want. I'm going to talk about that quarterback deal a little later. Do a little flip ski, kaduski of the uh, dry board ski, water ski. And let's just talk about JP, GP, George Pickens. He did well, you know. And if you follow my podcast and the way that I feel, I still would not have wanted him in the game. No. I still think that we would have been whatever. You know, that's the way I feel. Okay. And at the end of that game, with the great feelings that I had, I wasn't really moved necessarily as far as my stance on him. You know, uh, Awesome. You know, like at the end of that game, I was like, oh, we could sell him for twice as much as I thought we could sell him for earlier. That's me. Uh, you know? But I did end up coming across something. And I may be a little susceptible to some of the gossip or some of the, maybe the BS. I don't know. If any of my viewers, please, if you consider, please consider liking my video. Uh, it helps, I guess, you know. And uh, there was this quote by an anonymous, it's, you, know, you got to imagine it's got to be BS if it's anonymous, you know. An anonymous defensive back from the Cincinnati Bengals said that George Pickens walked on through into their locker room. Then, as quoted, this defensive back said, George Pickens walked right by them, the defensive back family group, class, uh, room, these guys, and it says, better lace up your shoelaces, it's going to be a long night. Now, that might be all junky, 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 junky. Who wants to put, you know, who, I don't know where I got it from. I could be, be pulling it out of me. You know what I mean? I don't know. But he moved a little bit forward. I still want to sell him. But, like, it was kind of a dick move. You know what I mean? And I appreciate dick moves. I do not appreciate asshole moves. The men, all the guys I love, you know, they're fucking dicks. But I don't fuck around with assholes. That shit that he did with that blocking stuff and the way he talked, uh, that was asshole shit. If this is true about him going into the Bengals locker room, <laughs> I want it to be true. I do, I do, I do. You know. But I'll just leave that at that. Um, 
the thing that I uh, had mentioned in the last podcast was one of the keys that I thought would help them win or be competitive into this game is that if they ended up dropping the outside linebackers. And did you notice about Watt roaming around in the middle of the uh, line sometimes? Pretty cool! Coming back and then Alex dropping back was pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. And then that interception was pretty, really, really darn nice when he pulled back out of that pressure. I mean, they haven't made the phone call yet to tell me, like, hey, thanks, Steeler Wade, for uh, giving us that, you know, like, we never thought about dropping our linebackers. I appreciate that. But, you know, I'm sure it's on the way. I'm sure it's on the way. Uh... I also, I didn't mention this as far as like a key of winning, but do you remember, I was saying, I'm not like, I'm not like that, but I mentioned about like, when was the last time you heard of the old jet sweep? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been like, we used to have that ship pounded and pounded and pounded into us, you know? And like, it's been absent from class. And then... With Austin coming around. <laughs> and that block uh, that Jalen did with uh, sending. Okay, now make sure that you know that that Pratt guy, Jermaine, whatever his name is, that angle, was not like a cornerback. He wasn't like a slot cornerback for that team. He it was an inside linebacker, like a 250-hundred pounder. Boom! Folks! It was an exciting game. It was an exciting game. You know, I want to, I guess, just go back to the Mason and Kenny thing. Tomlin talks a lot about football justice. And there may be some justice going around with Mason. And uh, uh, it's uh, I'm going to tip my hat to Mason on the next start, which I believe will happen. But I'm just talking about me emotionally. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe in a Tom... Uh, Tom and view as far as like I'm looking at this game, you know. But the one last note that I want to make sure that I got when we were getting all those podcasts hit to us talking about we just haven't had the uh, tape on Pickett. We haven't had enough time to evaluate him. You know, that was the whole talk while Mitch Trubisky was starting. Just, they fucking podcast just want to leave it alone. They just beat it and beat it and beat it. It's like, we had an evaluation, evaluation, evaluation. It was like evaluation took over the word uh, execute. You know what I mean? Like these mother, they just beat these words to death, right? At that same time frame, like week, 20 days ago, was the same people talking about, who's the leader on the offense? They're all too young. Who's the leader? Nobody. And when it was presented to me, I was like, I ain't got an answer. It's not Isaac. It's not Deontay. He's too quiet, too. You know, Kenny is the leader. He definitely wants to be a winner, but he's not on the field. And he's not doing well. Whatever the case may be, you know. So these talking heads definitely had the point, like, there is no leadership. And then before then, if you go a couple weeks before then, they're going like, what's the Steeler way? Who knows the Steeler way on the offense? 
So I am casting my vote for Mason Rudolph um, because he knows the old Steeler ways and he has been around greats um, that can that have given him the poise to be a good example. I think he's a good dude, and I wish him all the best of luck. I'm happy right now with the Steelers, you know. I cannot believe we, what was the Patriots won? That was weird. And then uh, there was another uh, team that there was, I was like, oh, wow, they won? You know, uh, so it helped us for the playoffs. You know, if it happens, it happens, right? You know, I want it to happen, but just if we win, we win. Those are the great days. Folks, again, thank you so much for spending time with me. And if you like what you hear, please press like. And if you would like to be reminded that one time you liked something, please press subscribe. I love your comments. I had the greatest comment about a nun in my last podcast. It was so cool. I love nuns. And it was a great comment. So I really appreciate them. Please keep them coming. I'm going to try to get something else out there. If there's anything interesting that goes on, like, it's not our soap opera. Hey, babies. Steeler Nation, thank you again.